So this video is designed to show you how you might gather up all of your annotations into a single node for retrieval and reporting purposes. Because typically with annotations, they'll be spread across multiple files and indeed nodes. But for certain purposes, uh, for example, for audit trail purposes, you may want to retrieve all of those annotations into a single file so that you can see them, print them uh, and work with them. Um, and it depends on the methodology. But for example, if you were doing Smith 2008 IPA, Interpretive Phenomeno Phenomenological Analysis, um, then you would be, the initial stage of coding is called initial coding and noting. So Smith placed as much emphasis on the initial, on the note as he does on the code itself. So the coding assumptions, the rationale for the code, the researcher's thoughts and ideas. Uh, and so gathering all of them into a single place can be useful, but of course, all the text that's annotated is different and you don't necessarily know what to search for because they're all different pieces of text. And that means we have to use a slightly more sophisticated query than many people would normally use. So there are lexical queries in NVivo, um, text searches, word frequency searches, and compound queries, but only the compound query allows you to search annotations. And that's where we're searching. Now, the other problem we have is that we don't know. We can see these are spread across all multiple different types of sources. We've got media files, we've got interviews, uh, we've got surveys, PDFs. And we don't know what text to search for. So um, we're going to we're going to run a compound query, which is a little bit more sophisticated because it allows you to combine either a text search and a coding query or two text searches or two coding queries. Now that makes it very powerful. It makes it, in fact, the mother of all queries because let's say, for example, I wanted to search my literature. Um, I want to search for a phrase, value co-creation, let's say. But I only want it if it's preceded by the word conclusion. I only want to find papers that have this term mentioned in their conclusions or their abstracts. So I ask for that term preceded by the word abstract or conclusion. That's the text search element, but I might also want to restrict that to five star journals, publications in the last five years and the discipline of, say, education. So I can apply all these filters using a coding query. Now, standard lexical queries don't allow you to do as much as a compound query does in terms of operators like preceding, surrounding, near. So we're going to show you how you would gather all these annotations with a single query. So I'm going to go to the compound query here. And these are all stored down here in the queries area. And we've saved one in here just to show you how it works. So I've made one called extract annotations. I'm going to go into the query properties just to show you how it's set up. So unlike, uh, we don't need a coding query and a text search today. We need two text searches uh, because you must have two queries. That's the whole point of a compound query. One is building on the results of the first. So in the criteria here, I'm going to set my conditions just like you would in any text search. Now, because I don't know what text I'm looking for, I've put in all the vowels with the operator or in between them, and I've wrapped them into quotes as well. And then some other very basic keywords like that, to, of, from, near. And that means that um, I, the kind of words and phrases and letters that would appear in every paragraph somewhere. So I've, I've, I, I, know, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I know I'm gonna find any paragraph uh, that's annotated or any annotation. And the other thing I could do in a compound query is tell it to look in the annotations. I can't do that in a regular text search. So the second part, I'm using the operator R. I actually don't really need the second query in this in instance. I'm only using it because I can't search annotations in a regular text search. So I've basically put the same conditions into the second search so that it would find both. And, and that's really all I have to worry about. I go into my query options. I'm telling it to make a new node in the nodes area. I'm calling it extract locations. And I'm telling it when it finds any of those words or phrases to bring the surrounding paragraph because annotations are recorded in paragraphs. So um, it'll find anything. And that's obviously very important. Otherwise it would just code the word is, it wouldn't code the context in which it was used. And I'm telling it to open the results when it does it. And that's it, I hit my run button and I get my node with all of my annotations anywhere in the database. And there they all are. And they're stored up here now in the area known as nodes, this root directory folder, and there they are. So now I can do more reporting. I can re export this in a variety of ways. I can export it 
the node itself as a Word document. So I get all my words, I can include my annotations and other things like memos and see also links if I have them. And that gives me a Word document that has endnotes in it. So each of those annotations will now have a little number beside them. And you can see the numbers there. So when I scroll down to the end, I can see all my annotations linked back up into the text from anywhere in the database. And it's telling me what sources any of these are coming from. So these, this one here is coming from Thomas's interview. If I don't like that as a format, I can also export my node in an HTML format, and I can put that out onto the desktop. Again, I'll include my annotations and I'll open that and export and I get a, a different format, both of which I can share with people who don't have in vivo. So all you need is a web browser to look at a HTML file or Word to look at a Word file. I could send it out as a PDF, I could send it out on paper. So it, it takes a minute because it's exporting media files and everything else out there with it. So anything that's been annotated will now appear uh, just like in a regular web browser. So here it is. And it's called extract annotations, the same name as the node. And I can see here that I have my interviews, my images, my audio, my video, all with their annotations. Or if I want to look specifically at just say the videos, so I can see them. So I can see this, the, the, the annotation here and I can see which text was annotated and the note. And they're numbered here. And the same would apply here. If I look at my interviews, this is Susan. There's the piece that was annotated in Susan interviews and there's the note itself. So a very easy, easy manner in which I can retrieve all of my annotations spread across any type of document or file that I've coded. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, as a, The compound query may be a bit of a challenge and there's a bit more to learning it than I've just demonstrated here, but it'd be a good place to start. And, um, and so hopefully that's of some help to you. One caveat with that um, video I've just shown you is that you, and I forgot to mention this in the video, is that you would need to clear your stop word list for that query to work. So normally words like as, is, or but would be part of the standard stop word list. Um, if you go into file project properties, you'll see an option to click on the stop word list. If you click on that, select them all and delete them. Uh, say OK, then the query will work because it will allow those words through when they normally would be stopped. You could just go back and reset the stop word list afterwards to put them back if you want to. But that's one caveat that I should have included in the video and forgot to. So just to be clear on that, uh, that would make the query work. You may get you may miss some annotations if you didn't do that. Hope that's helpful.